All right, y'all. So welcome back. This is the podcast for the underdog by the underdog. Today we're with Jared, man. So uh, most of these videos are about rebuilding your life. And I feel like a lot of times once we quit using and things like that, we don't know how to start living without that. We still eat the same things. We still have the same habits. So Jared wanted to come in and talk about eating habits and working out, things like that. Just basically how to be healthy in today's world, right? Yeah, basically. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean... I've never touched a drug in my life besides food. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that food is even more of a potent drug. I, I know it is. <laughs> uh, people that I know, my fiance, uh, just addicted to the stuff. Once they get off of it, I've got her off all the Chick-fil-A's and the, the Taco Bells and stuff. We went yesterday to treat ourselves and the kids. Like maybe once a month we try it. She ate one chicken nugget from mm -hmm. Chick-fil-A and she felt it the rest of the day. How just... It's horrible, horrific for the body. The the, the stuff right, so that they... how, how does it affect or like how do you feel it affects someone? For example, for me, like I used to eat a bunch of fast food crap like that when I was younger too. I do, I try my best not to eat anything like that. I don't do Burger King, McDonald's, Taco Bell. I can't eat that stuff. It settles on my stomach different. It makes me feel bad now because yeah. I eat better food. So how's that work? Like if you're eating that stuff all the time, how's it affecting you versus healthier food? I mean, like the the term hangry that that a lot of people refer to uh i'm hangry that's like you're craving just like you would alcohol or a cigarette or so it's, it's, they're all drug it's a horrible horrible drug uh the the stuff that they put in it you go to a chick-fil-a like at, at lunchtime people are lined up three miles long it seems like to mm -hmm. get their fix mm -hmm. and it's <sighs> the body you i mean i guess just like with the drug you build up a tolerance and you need it you need it, you need it. once you detoxify yourself i mean if i eat my lunch i normally fast during the day but if i'm doing a workout i eat clean uh i don't feel sluggish like everybody you take your 30 minute lunch break and you you don't you can't go back to work because you want to take a nap mm -hmm. i don't feel that way mm -hmm. i feel energized with what i eat which is what? Like, give me ex give me an example of your day, what you're going to eat on a regular work day. I get uh, organic uh, eggs from my boy that uh, has a farm. I do like three eggs with uh, ghost pepper. Um, then I'll probably fast most of the day. Uh, and then dinner, it's going to be a, a salad out of my garden with some grilled chicken. Something like that. Or lots of meat. Mm -hmm. Meat and vegetables. That's it. Mm -hmm. I don't so do no potatoes, nope. no starches. Nope. Why not? It's just all sugar turns to sugar. Mm -hmm. This whole uh, everything they have to offer is sugar. Uh, high fructose corn syrup, all of it turns to sugar. I mean, that's why this obesity epidemic is at all an all time high. Mm -hmm. I, I can't. I, I go go to the pool. Everybody's fat. Mm -hmm. there's no fit people and i feel like that's only in america the way it is this way right it's like and then maybe not only but more so in america than any other place yeah yeah i mean as soon as you walk into martin's or or a uh, food line it, it, it's right there in front of you with bright colors all the sugar please buy this as mm -hmm. soon as you walk in mm -hmm. and on your way out yeah and yep. it's been that way all our lives mm-hmm you know what I mean? So it's like slowly been integrated into our society as normal. Mm -hmm. And now you got the bigger people, you know what I'm saying? Being on social media and stuff and talking about just be proud of your unhealthiness. It's, it's acceptance because we're lazy. I mean, it's, it's, it is a generation of laziness. And why wouldn't you want to be healthy, right? Like, I understand the same thing is just like a drug addict wants to use, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But we want to be clean. We don't really mm -hmm. want to stay in that cycle. Yeah. I think some people feel the same way, right? Like, you get to the point of not being able to bend over and tie your shoes. <laughs> you understand that there's an issue going on and yeah. you have a control over that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and nobody wants to. It's deemed like maybe the drugs have, have been deemed bad. Okay, cool. When do we like the dare program, whatever? When do we come to a point where uh, this food is bad? Let's mm -hmm. take a stand. But they're keeping us sick for pharmaceutical reasons mm -hmm. because, like, hence my maybe people that I know, I'm not going to say mm -hmm. um, they're on 20, 30 different health pills. Mm -hmm. and that's a fortune. To, to they're making fortunes off of them, uh, and especially with the health insurance that 
I mean, it's all a scam. So it seems like a cycle then, huh? Right. So it's like, okay, let's make them fat and unhealthy. Then we can get them into the doctors and we can feed them prescriptions. Yep. Uh, we have them coming into the doctors, paying the doctors every month for a checkup, blood work, mm -hmm. send them to do this and that. Go home and eat your fried chicken and your McDonald's again and come back and you're mm -hmm. never going to get well, but I'm going to give you these pills. Yep. Yeah, exactly. That's isn't it illegal to not have health insurance? I believe. I don't know if it's illegal. I think Trump overturned that. But it um, was a try to. Yeah. Well, they had a thing. Where, yes, when Obama was in the Obamacare thing, and he wanted mm -hmm. everybody to have health insurance. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's. I, I haven't seen a doctor. They ask everybody asks me like when I'm trying to enroll my kids mm -hmm. with uh, with their indoctrination camps. Um, What's your where's your your local health provider? Where's your doctor? I don't go to doctors. Mm -hmm. My kids don't go to doctors. Mm -hmm. If I need to check their height, I have a tape measure. If I check their weight, I have a scale. Uh, what do you what are you trying to imply here? I mm -hmm. I don't I don't need they, a doctor. They want you to subscribe is mm -hmm. what they want. They want that it's like Netflix or Hulu. They want a subscription from you. They want you to pay every month, and mm -hmm. then they want you to go to their people that they're supporting, which is the pharmacies mm -hmm. and the other doctors. And they want you to subscribe to them too, right? Yep, basically. But instead of giving you really what you want, it's just a, and and I guess some doctors you can't say all doctors are the same. You know, yeah. I mean, let's not throw a blanket statement on them because a lot of doctors I've gone to really did care about my health. Yeah. But I was able to manipulate them into giving me narcotics to the point that they knew them narcotics was going to keep me coming back to them for more stuff. And I, they yeah. just got paid every month, every month, every month. Well, that's just like with uh, motocross. I, how many? People do I know that have died due to not motocross accidents, but they have an accident, break a bone, they go take some really cool pills. Oh wow, this leads to this next pill. This now we're we're at heroin, mm -hmm. two heroin overdoses from motocross friends that had never done drugs in their life until they went to a doctor, and that's how that. I mean, I've had a lot of broken bones. Uh, they um, gave me a bunch of pills. Uh, Unfortunately, I sold them on the street. I, I don't even take Advil. Mm -hmm. I don't put any chemical in my body. Mm -hmm. uh, I sold them on the street to pay for my bills because I couldn't work at the time. So well, maybe not the smartest idea, but at least I didn't take them. Mm, we've done way more than that on this channel. <laughs> That's minimal. So let's get back to like, I feel like you started out talking with uh, you, you, what you've seen, how you've watched your people's habits change and be controlled. Let's talk about that a little bit more. Like, like. with my fiance, she's completely turned upside down she has an abundance of energy just lively uh i mean it, it just it's like what you put inside your vehicle if you put crap gasoline you're going to get crap output mm -hmm. you know um my brother he started eating healthier now instead of the the hot pockets and the sheets fried food mm -hmm. he changed over i mean he's losing weight he's coming around uh, it's it's your body can only take so much uh as kids we're resilient you know i used to eat that crap uh, we, we can take it but we can take it for only so long like if you mix for another reference to a vehicle if you mix water with oil in your vehicle it's going to take it it's going to take it but eventually yeah, well, gonna and it's going to crash and then there's no coming back mm -hmm. so as we could take it for a while because our bodies are awesome that we heal each other or we, we our bodies heal we get a cut it gets a scab over that cut so it can heal rejuvenate and we're good to go after that but when you keep pushing it so hard it's not going to do it and then here goes the the cancers and the diabetes and all the diseases that come from unhealthy eating and so many of the things that we do interact with have carcinogens in them, right? I'm sorry. Carcin like so many things we have, have those cancer causing agents yeah. in them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like sunscreen. I was doused in sunscreen all day yesterday, but it supposedly has, you know, things in it that causes mm -hmm. cancer that you're trying to stop skin cancer with. You're trying yeah. to, you know what I mean? Yeah. How does these things make sense? Right. Yeah. Again, back to, are they causing these things for pharmaceutical reasons? Uh, you know, I, I would say so. I mean, it's such a big profiting business. That yeah, there's. I mean, you got to question everything. There's always a scheme behind it. In my mind, if you think about that too, man, it's like if I'm making my money by treating unhealthy people, do I want them to be healed? Because then I stop making nope. money. Nope. It's just like with me and heating and air conditioning. Same same thing. I mean, I need systems to break down so I can go fix or install. 
they need bodies to break down so they can actually not fix. <laughs> right. Just, just keep a, putting a Band-Aid on it and put a Band-Aid on it. And, yeah, uh, man, it's definitely a vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, like, recommendations from you. Like, what do you, what do you, how do you... Because there's a dopamine that goes off with all that, oh right? Oh, God, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Somebody takes that bite of that Big Mac or yeah. whatever, and it's just like all these things are going off that tells them they're loving it, huh? Mm -hmm. It's uh, you got to break through it, just like a drug addiction. I mean, you get you got have to realize, and it took Samantha a very long time because we would pass by sheets. Oh, I want some uh, mozzarella sticks. Mm. Oh, oh, there's Taco Bell, and they make it so presentable. Mm. There's no healthy, no place to go. We don't eat out. I mean, I go to a local butcher, and I get my my meat and my vegetables. Uh, but yeah, it's, she's now past that part of, I don't even want it anymore. Right. So she's past the cravings. Yep. yep. So at first it was like, we're trying to teach you a new way of life. Just like we're getting mm -hmm. off drugs. It's yep. a new way of eating. But every time you pass by those drugs, which was food, mm -hmm. it was like, she had a craving. She, yep. she, her, her mouth saliva yep. a little bit, right? She wanted some of that, man. The yep. same way as our body feels like it reaches out for drugs. It's interesting because it is a drug. Mm -hmm. It is. It, it is. And, and food's like, I've always told everybody, like, my people want to feed me all the time. You know what I mean, eat some more, eat some more, get mm -hmm. bigger. And I'm like, I, I don't want to do that. I eat to survive. I don't eat because I love it. Yeah, right. Why, okay, that's, that was another question that I wrote down on my notes. Why do we eat? Okay. Why? I mean, I eat to survive. Okay. I eat because I yeah. need energy and, you know. Yes, not for pleasure. Like, I could go, or my my children, they think, they, they when my uh, my parents, their grandparents babysit them. They think they have to have snacks all the time, potato chips and pretzels and all that, just constantly. That's how I grew up, that my grandparents constantly just snacks. Here, have a cookie, have a donut. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. That's, uh, you're, you're ruining your body by doing that. Right. So where do we learn to do that? Where do we learn that that was okay? Is it, you think that's like before we knew that all that chocolate and all those sweets caused problems? That's a good question. Uh, it's, the uh, only thing I could say is it's how I was brought up. Yeah, how right. I was taught. Me I too. told I told my kids, you know, no, you're not eating the the BS stuff. Right. Uh, we're gonna eat healthy. I mean, they they go out in my garden that they help grow, and w when it comes time for dinner, they pick out their lettuce, their Swiss chard, their peppers, their tomatoes that they want, and then I'll grill some chicken, and that's it. They nice. don't get snacks. They don't right. get anything from the sheets. And whatever Seven Elevens, garbage in, garbage yeah, it's, out, right? It's disgusting. How about sodas? No, none. No, never. they've never, never had a soda in their life. No. Nope. Excuse me for cussing. I told you not to cuss, right? <laughs> yeah. But uh, that's like really crazy because so many kids just not even, not even uh, the the uh, apple juices and the orange juices. It's all high fructose all corn syrup. Is sugar. It is junk. It's disgusting. It's poison. I was just telling somebody yesterday on the way back from the lake, this giant cornfield on the back. I was like, you know, all that is nothing but corn syrup. That's all they're going to use that for. That's yeah. not going to be a, a ear of corn or a mm -hmm. can of corn. That's going to be processed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We drink water and unsweet tea. And then I make my own juices. Uh, I, I go to a Knoll's Farmer Market on uh, Route 7 and get all the fruit uh, when it's in season. And if it's not in season, well, I'll just stock up on it, freeze it. And then we'll do like uh, coconut water with and make our own smoothies hmm. for a, something that tastes better than water. So let's talk about shopping, shopping at Walmart. Places like that. Do you do anything there? Like maybe paper towels and toilet paper? That's about it. <laughs> no food, anything no. like that? No spices, nothing? No, no. I get, uh, uh, actually, the lady we live up on, on the mountain, four-way stop, they set up on the weekends with, uh, like, vendors of mm -hmm. homemade, like a miniature farmer's market, tomatoes, right. whatnot. And she makes her own spices. Pretty cool. So, and it's cheap. So you've pretty much found a way to eat completely outside of our societal yes. norm 100 yeah. and be more healthy for it mm -hmm. i think i'm gonna title this why it, do we eat yeah there you go why do we eat i eat when i work out i do intensive workouts uh twice a week i do repl i eat more after that uh obviously but i mean i can go two days fasting and not even think about it okay 
So before we get into the workouts, let's talk about the fasting thing a little bit because I've been doing the same thing. So mm -hmm. it's been like this will be my fourth week right now. Mm -hmm. I've been eating one big meal a day, which is my dinner. So in the mornings, I'm getting up and I'm drinking coffee with sugar in it, bro. I'm not perfect. I'm use still, honey. I'm still getting there. So I might try that. Yeah, that's okay. what she does now. We got rid of all the sugar. We use honey, okay. the local made honey. All right, I'm going to try that. I'll try that. And then I go from there, and I normally make like four boiled eggs, and I'll eat them, three of them or four of them, and then that's the only thing I eat until 3 o'clock. I'm that's normally awesome. going to the gym at 2 or 3 o'clock. I kind of feel a little sluggish, but I don't feel as sluggish as I do is if I would have ate a sandwich and had all that crap on my belly at 12 o'clock then trying to go at 3. Mm -hmm. Even though I haven't ate since 6 o'clock the next day other than a few eggs, I feel good at 3 o'clock when I'm going to the gym. That's awesome. I have a little energy, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I come home and eat. Does that sound like something that's productive or that's not productive? That's pretty good. Yeah. Eggs are freaking awesome for you. That's all we eat. Like I got the kids. I I, I was getting a, a, the, there's a healthy cereal called a magic spoon, which is like the different flavors as we grew up as kids, but there's no artificial junk in it. But that was they're like $15 a pop. Mm. Uh, so I got steered off of that and because I can get eggs for dirt cheap mm -hmm. for my buddy, like I said. I like the I like the uh, farm eggs too. I yeah. like fresh eggs. Yep, that's uh, what we get. I don't get them as often as I like, but I like fresh and they're eggs. They're cheap. I get like two fifty a dozen. Right, cheaper than the store. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, it's a it? no brainer. But Definitely, nobody nobody yeah. puts two and See, two together. So that right there will probably be a hookup for me. I need somebody like that that I could get five dozen from every two I could weeks. Do, I could hook you up all day long. Right. Yeah, I, I normally I, stock up with like about five to six dozen. Right. At a time. And uh, the Farm fresh eggs, you don't have to keep in the refrigerator, right? Yep. You're supposed to keep them on the counter. Yep. Yep. Yeah, just wash them. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I've had them come in with little blood and stuff on them before. I've had yeah. people bring them to me a little nasty, <laughs> but wash them up. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah, man, I would subscribe to that. You know what I mean? Okay. If somebody's like, I'm going to bring eggs every two weeks, I'd be like, hell yeah, I'll pay you X amount right. of dollars. Well, yep, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll hook you up uh, first batch for free, see what you think. Nice. Hell yeah. yeah. Um, and, but yeah, about the fasting, fasting is awesome. Dude, I've researched so much and um, you go two days without eating, let your body's organs heal. Like if somebody that's a smoker or somebody that's a drinker with their liver or, or any any major organ, you can heal it. We're constantly putting stuff. This is like what I was saying earlier, constantly eating all the time. Mm -hmm. Your body's working so hard to digest this food and your stomach and your gut, it can't seek attention any place else that the body might need so hmm. give it a rest reset it it's a reset button fasting Makes sense yeah it's it's great yeah because it does take a lot of energy for your digestive system to push something through you doesn't it mm -hmm. you know from your stomach yeah. to your intestines and then out uh that's a whole lot of energy mm -hmm. that your body has to use yeah our, our bodies are magical machines i mean that's worth that's another podcast for another time. Where does it? Where does this technology come from? Right. But there's we're so powerful, and yet we're out here abusing it every day. And it gets to the point where, all right, I'm done. I'm done trying to help right. you. You need to help yourself, or right. or it's termination. All right, we seek pleasure and avoid pain. Mm -hmm. It's like a natural thing. That's that's why I do my ice baths. I like the pain. I accept it. I welcome it. So let's talk about that too. I've done that three mm -hmm. times. I've done it. Didn't go below about 60 degree water, but never did it before. There's something that uh, you have to focus in a way that is unnatural to normal life, right? Breath, in order uh, to sit work. through that cold. Breath work. Because when we get nervous, it's <laughs> yes. like we're just, we just. And if you learn to do that within the first breath, minute. Meditation. Yeah. And then you're good. I, you say 60 degrees. I'm not like 30 degrees. Right. I could set it. In. How long you sit? Uh, when I get to a meditative state with a lot of heavy metal music, um, 20 minutes. No doubt. That's mm -hmm. crazy. We was doing three minutes and then it got to be winter time and getting out into the really much colder. Yeah. It was just like something we quit, man. But, but it's something I really want to get back into. Yeah. Yeah. I got an, I got a nice chest, uh, I got like a, a freezer. Right. So you turn one of them in where you caulk everything and you freeze the, the water that's in it. No, it's just a regular freezer. Like I, t I plug it in the wall. Uh -huh. I'll, let it, I'll let it set for overnight, and get nice and cold, and then uh, I'll do my ice bath in the morning. Big chunks of ice floating up. Uh huh. I love it. So I got one of the big troughs out back, and that's one of the problems is ice. Each day, especially yeah. when it's going to be 102 like it was yesterday, like that water's going to be 80, 90 degrees. 
Mm-hmm. And then you're trying to cool it down to 30. Yeah, it won't. It, it yeah. doesn't work very you, well. To go go to Lowe's and pay like, I can't remember, 150, 200. I can't remember how, how much I paid for mine, but it's worth worth the investment. And you don't have to do nothing on the inside of it to change it into that? You just put water in and froze yep. it? Yeah, uh, over a while, it, it'll get dirty because there's no filtration system mm-hmm. in it. So I'll dump it out and start from scratch. Right, clean it up real yeah. good. It's got a drain on it too, though, doesn't it? It's supposed to, but it doesn't drain. So I just Fuck take a bucket. Yeah. Well, actually, no, I, I get all four of my kids out there, and they take the buckets to get all the water out for me. And clean right. It. Put, put them to work, though. I know. I do 24-7. Put them to work. Yep. That's, uh, that's good for kids. I think kids don't know uh, discipline, and they don't understand the, the value of a dollar because people don't work them like that. I went to a Sheets the other day, yesterday, to get a coffee and or whatever I was getting. Uh this dude just started, look, maybe 18, 19 years old. I walk up to him. It's $40. I want my drink and the rest of the money I want on pump five for gas. He's just so distraught. So, like, like looking around, like, what do I do? And he has to get an older person to come help to use a calculator to do the subtraction for him. It's not 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 necessarily a work ethic. It's just how they've been r- being raised. I mean, I see them walking around like zombies on iPads and iPhones, like in a mall or something like that. Like there's there's no conscious there. There's no thinking. So <laughs> that's another problem. How how can we train these kids to eat when their parents are absolutely worthless and bringing them up? Mm-hmm. That's that's a way bigger problem than health. Yeah. That's that's just a, 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 having a conscious. <laughs> How easy is it though for them just to say, "Here's my phone, shut up." This At is, two or uh, three years old, whatever, mm-hmm. you're basically handing them cocaine, mm-hmm. heroin, marijuana, alcohol, whatever the name you want to put on it, mm-hmm. sets off the same receptors in the brain. Yep. You're getting the same pleasure. Get their dopamine fix. It's like with social media and likes and and all that. It's all in competition to who who likes me, and it's just I don't know. I don't. And if we're gonna <laughs> keep having it, we need a way to rein it in a little bit, right? You need to be able to say, "Yo, I'm not gonna be on my phone for six hours a day so that it's destroying my productivity." Mm-hmm. I need to understand that I can do a little thirty minutes in the morning, mm-hmm. a little thirty minutes at night, and still live a normal life. Yeah, and you know. There's different ways that we can use the social media to our advantages, like my HVAC, your podcasts, mm-hmm. uh, but use it being productive. Right. Or my spider solitaire addiction. I, I do have that, unfortunately. Right. A game or something <laughs> that you play? Spider solitaire. Okay. <laughs> but that's about it. And, uh, you know, I, I use social media to advertise my children just because I'm proud, proud of them, but yeah. I'm not addicted i'm uh, you know i'm not always on there complaining about something and, and for me it's like i do so much of this social media stuff so i'm on a computer or all that so often i see how quickly it can become a thing but i've definitely learned to turn it off and just sit with nothing no tv yeah. no nothing and you'll find something to do because you get bored right mm-hmm. like your dopamine is not being triggered by silence in this room i need to go make myself feel like a certain way yeah well i mean we normally go outside do stuff we live up, up on the mountain, so there's tons of things to do. Or, you know, if I'm not working, because I work so much doing heating and air conditioning, uh, we'll go out and I'll have the kids organize my toolbox or build a fort. There's so many things we can do other than stay on a freaking device. Mm-hmm. And uh, I see that in uh, a couple of families' houses that I've been to. There's these kids, I mean, they're 10 years old. They don't have any... Uh, 10 years old and they can't get up and say hi how are you doing i say hi hi and the parents are right there beside them and don't even say nothing to them about how impolite they are yeah and it's w- walking in like i said walking into walmart you said earlier or walking in anywhere they'll walk into me they're right. not even paying attention right. i'll run right into them mm-hmm. purposefully mm-hmm. Like, look up there, there is no conscious left and half these humans. It's scary, man. It's scary, bro. It like, we got a little off topic as far as food and all that stuff goes, but I feel like all that stuff's relevant it to, is. to how it is because you can easily quit doing anything. I don't care if it's eating or smoking dope or shooting drugs and then just ruin your life with a telephone. Mm-hmm. And it feels like, like, why are these things being implemented the way they are too, right? Because you can't really affect these kids under 15 with drugs. 
Not the way you can adults because adults make their own decisions, right? But when you throw this phone drug in there and the parents are just handing them out like they're sugar cookies again. Or you throw out the Chick-fil-A. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to cook food. Let's go mm -hmm. through the drive through Bro, I'm in, in my kitchen every evening and every morning cooking, prepping. But I, I work all day. I, I can't cook at night that's after a, I work all day. That's a lazy excuse. Right, exactly. If you if you do love your kids, then why don't we teach them a healthier way? Mm -hmm. Instead of, I mean, giving them diabetes at the age of seven. Mm -hmm. That's a thing. That's a disgusting thing. Yeah, man, definitely so. That's a diabetes and these cancers, uh, uh, autoimmune diseases they didn't come from the ground they didn't come from a tree they didn't come from the sky they came from these plant-based foods i love it i love the plant-based uh burgers okay uh, it's made in a plant it's made in plant it's not it doesn't come from a plant it's made in a plant they're just laughing in our faces making it look cute and neat hmm. it's it's not well not they from chuckle a plant. behind the curtain oh uh -huh. so yeah. what is it what is it made of Right. Something that I'm never gonna put in my body. <laughs> I'll never know. The impossible. Yeah, burger. impossible. Yeah, it's yeah. impossible that you believe that this thing yeah. might be healthy for you. Right. <laughs> How about uh, do you know anything about like the whole soy thing? Because I've heard things about like where they're planting all this soy, blah blah blah. That's supposed to mess up the ground and stuff around it, even worse than you know farming or regular. Yeah, I have tapped into that before. I can't. I'm not that intelligent on it to, to give any opinion but i know it's not good mm -hmm. uh and all that yeah the soy that's what they're using the soy uh beans to make these burgers i believe and from what i've researched and the podcasts that i've listened to there's nothing good about it yeah me too so and what about microplastics you ever looked up on anything about that how it affects the body no i have not that's something you should look into uh they say we we intake at least a credit card's worth of microplastics every so often and there's so many different theories on how those microplastics affect us mm -hmm. and affect our bodies uh, to the point of some of the gender confusion of today <laughs> coming from it, which is another reason I feel like it's probably not spoke on is because no one wants to, no one from these industries that are pushing that agenda as well mm. want people to know that there's a cause of it or could be a cause of and, it. Uh, what, what's the microplastics coming from? Uh, anything, bro. Everything. So your water bottle, your shower curtain, your your friggin' uh, shampoo bottle, uh, your deodorant bottle. Think of everything you touch and come into contact with that has plastic in it. It is leaving a residue on our bodies in That's some crazy. way. Yeah, I know. Like with the shampoo and stuff, we use uh, all organic, uh, natural made, or like like the hemp products. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a lot of money, but mm -hmm. it's. Uh, I know our skin's a whole lot better. I mean, I've been doing it for a while. I just got Samantha on it, and she can notice a difference with uh, her skin, hair, mm. collagen. We do. I do. I do a lot of collagen intake as well, just to repair. All right. That's funny how, as life has gone on for humans, and we've evolved, we have devolved in the way we take care of ourselves. Absolutely. So. It's cheaper. I mean, there's. I can also jock it up to there being so, and I can't say anything negative because I have four kids, but uh, there's so many people. We're so overpopulated that the infrastructure is outrageous, and they're gonna make our shampoos, our foods, our soaps as cheap as possible. Because there's so many, there's the, the, the demand is so high, I, value went right out the window. Or quality went right out the window. Yeah, that's for sure. So they don't care. And also, they're, I mean, they're constantly thinking of ways to weed us off. They need a population reduction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's two sides of that, too, that I've heard, and I haven't studied much on it. But it's like some people say there's too many of us, and some people say there's not. Um, but I think when you look at places like New York, where you started to take people and put them on top of people and top, right. so that the buildings had to go up. And now these 68 people in this building that would have been one house with eight people in it. Now they all have to come down and go out on the street. And then you put a 15 of them on top of each other. And you wonder why it takes 30 minutes to get a half a block down the road. 
It's true. And then you go to North or South Carolina, and there's a an abundance, like there's a lot of motocross tracks I go down there, and uh, there's an abundance of land. Nobody, I mean, it is a different world. You come to mm -hmm. Winchester, it's like you can't even breathe. There's so many people there. You might see one or two cars pass you by in, in 30 to 40 minutes. It's funny, you go to a local gas station, they're just so much nicer, they're welcoming, mm -hmm. like they're family. They, they don't even know you. And here, Winchester, it's polluted with dickheads. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, and it's definitely, we, we aren't in the society you and I grew up in. Like, we went to doctor's offices and things like that when we were kids. You had magazines and people talking to each other, and now everybody's sitting there on their phones. Yes. So, you know what I mean? And maybe Circle people, around. the doctors showed more care back then instead of, here's this pill. Mm -hmm. Take a pill. You'll get addicted to it. You're going to have a drug problem after that. They don't care. It's their job. Yeah. Yeah, they do. And they just want you to come back. They just want, mm -hmm. it's just like a. Yep. Like, like I said, that's why I don't go. Like they, they, I, I get s s scoffed at. I've been scoffed at because I don't, I'm not going to take my children to a doctor for checkups. They don't need it. We, we They're healthy. <laughs> Maybe a dentist. Right. But right. I don't, they don't need to go to a doctor. Right. I am the doctor. I study food. I study health. And I mean, if as long as they can communicate with you how they feel, you know what I mean? You yeah. don't see any open wounds or noses falling off. I mean, I feel like they're probably okay. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? yeah. I don't need to spend two, three thousand dollars a month for you to tell me my kid's okay. He's still behaving the same as he was yesterday, last mm -hmm. week, last month. And they don't get sick. I mean, literally, I can't, I can count maybe two times in the last forever that they've been alive that they have been sick okay they're out in the dirt getting building up an immune system uh -huh. like we talked about no no tab no device sometimes i'll give them a device when when i'm on a job or something and there's board sitting in my truck okay maybe 30 40 minutes out of a day not long right we're they're, they're outside doing things they're never sick what do you know about like uh, the fast food crap, the crap food that we put in is like breaking down that part of our immune system. Do you think that's can't be good for it, but do you know like I about said, it? like I said, it's it's foreign material that the body doesn't want. So it's deriving so much energy to try to break down this garbage mm -hmm. that it can't the body can't keep up with keeping up with the immune system or healing right. wounds. Right, it's, so it's down here grinding up all this food, getting it together, and uh -huh. you got a little sniffle, you know, you breathe in something, and it's allowed to yep. take action because everything's yep. down there working. There's no workers up here to fight that off. Exactly. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And and like I said, the, the kids were born resilient, but over time, it just, that resilience wears away. Uh -huh. And uh, the body gets tired of, trying to deal with it and then that's like i said autoimmune diseases and we weren't designed to, we weren't designed to live this wrong right like people used to live 30 40 years and now we're living 100. Mm -hmm. you know what i mean i feel like it's like we, were we designed to live 100 years like our brains start breaking down with dementia our mm -hmm. bodies start breaking down gravity's killing our knees and mm -hmm. backs and i mean yeah yeah uh so many theories there but... <laughs> yeah that's true uh but I don't trust history, so to speak. That's a, that's a whole different co topic. But uh, who knows how long we used to live? Mm -hmm. I mean, we were lied to every day. Uh, who knows what happened back in the day? Regardless of that belief or not, though, it's like do the best you can and to live the longest you mm -hmm. can, right? Like yeah, my, like my great-grandmother, she lived to like over 100. She lived on a farm, ate eggs. There weren't McDonald's back there, or mm -hmm. maybe they were, but she didn't attend that. Uh, she, like my grandfather, he was 90 years old out changing the oil in his vehicle. Right. He didn't eat that shit. My grandmother, Crap. my grandmother was, my grandfather was born in 1900. My grandmother was born in 1901. My grandfather died like 80 some odd years old, but my grandmother lived in 90, made dinner, walked up the steps and died in her own bed at 90 years old. Wow. But they was the same type of people. They had their big garden, had 10 kids that took care of the garden. Mm -hmm. My grandfather built his house when my dad was one year old. That's, see, uh, that doesn't exist anymore. That's no. a dying breed. No, there's, people aren't built like that. Yeah, that's, geez. I managed to make a garden on top of, on the side of a mountain. 
five gallon buckets and I dug up what I could for the stuff that I wanted to put in the ground. But I mean, my, my garden always thrives mm-hmm. and me and the kids get out and do it. Yeah. So. You have to be productive in your life and you have to participate, right? Mm-hmm. And participating through fast food, telephones, drugs, all that mm-hmm. stuff is never going to help any of us have anything. No, no. It's not going to help you help the people around you. Yeah. It, it just teaches them a better way even conducting themselves as human beings to other people. Like we spoke about the kid, the kids that I've met in homes that can't even say hi and can't, can't greet somebody because they can't get off that damn phone. Mm -hmm. Uh, My kids are the opposite. You know, if I need my, my nine year old, he can get up and crack some eggs and cook them himself. If he wants to, Um, he can make his food. He's very productive. Meanwhile, some 26 year olds begging mama for a, glass of milk and some cookies right now on their gaming computer in the basement yeah or that that 18 year old 19 year old that i said i saw sheets couldn't use a calculator to subtract mm-hmm. 250 from 40 dollars and put the remainder on, on the pump he just looks at me 3750 like, yeah. 3750 <laughs> <laughs> just in case you need to know yeah. buddy <laughs> yeah well i made up number i can't remember mm. what it was but um, right but i got you i could figure that stuff right in my head though yeah. and, because that's what we had to do like i had i don't have, i'm good with numbers either way but i would just be able to say you know mm-hmm. like, whatever like look at him and be like really yeah, <laughs> really? yeah. oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, he couldn't even he could have been say uh, they, they're, they're programmed like such as in school do you have a siege card Hi, do you have a siege co- sheets mm-hmm, card? Mm-hmm. No, I don't. Or they say, "Hi, how are you doing today?" I'm good. How are you? They don't know. Right, reply they back. Right. They, they, it's a programming. Yeah. And that's a script. Yep. Yeah. And that's 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 what we learn in, in public schools. It is, man. I think public schools have gotten way worse. COVID killed public schools. COVID killed customer service. Like, you know what I mean? Well, that yeah, that the the all the online trait like the zells and the vimos and then now the uh no contact when you go into sheets to like mm-hmm. uh there's no human interaction it just further separates us so that people can't get together and do anything mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying like they won't let you make these groups they don't want you to have friends because you know as long as everybody's separated you know we're all weak yeah you look up the definition communism inside your uh smartphone mm-hmm. and then see the comparison yeah it's kind of like how it's working and mm-hmm. it? it is scary man yeah. and to you know to think about it from the larger scale like if or, you know all this was a chessboard like who's the people moving these pieces around man is what i've often wondered yeah. like, because that's how it is you see things change like we're getting ready to have a presidential election i mean it's an absolute joke on both sides yeah. You know what I mean? It's just the turmoil and separation and division on both sides. Mm-hmm. Who's moving the pieces around? Because that blonde-haired retard that's our president right now, he's not making the calls. Dude, he's not. He's a freaking cyborg. I don't think he's human. <laughs> he can, Right? <laughs> he might not be. He might so. be a freaking alien. Yeah. <clears throat> but he's definitely an alien that has lost his mind. Yeah. He can't put a sentence together. I, I, don't, I don't understand how anybody... Uh, I've had conversations with people about this. Uh, I don't like any of them, like you said. Mm -hmm. But at least, like, you you watch how this character conducts himself, and you think that's cute to run a country? I mean, are we that stupid? No, I don't think we are. I think the people see it, but the fact that the news and the people that stand by and say, oh, this is okay, and this is normal, and they try to act like all that is... Like the last thing that just came out where Obama walked him off the stage, they was like, it's a cheap fake. So you just put another term on this crap to call it something else. So it's, it, it's you know, it's supposed to be just a, a cheap fake, which means it's just an edited version. No, there's no edits in that man losing his mind on stage right there and being walked off by Barack Obama. It's just what happened. But they will sit there and tell you that what you've seen with your own eyes is not true. These people are evil, bro. They're I, evil. I watch a lot of horror movies. I'm a horror movie buff, and there's nothing that scares me more than that crap. Mm-hmm. It's I don't even know what to think about it anymore. And, I just I, I I turn my head yeah and mind my own business with so my family. As much as I try to do that too, man, I'm starting to see that there has to be something done because it's like these people fall down and say, "Drop, drop, drop!" Oh, he's gonna save the world. No, 
Biden, Biden, Biden. He's going to say, no, they're not. These people don't care about you or me because we don't make enough money for them to care about us, mm -hmm. man. They don't they don't care. And I just feel like I keep up just enough so that maybe before the end of the world, I have a little bit of warning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's not. Unfortunately, it's not going to be it, there is going to be a war, but it's going to be psychological. We're already in it now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a different, a modified version of the Cold War. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, which really sucks because the amount of firearms that I have to defend my family is ungodly. Mm -hmm. so, but it's not that will, they're going to be useless. You know, they're turning these turning these kids into zombies with the food, mm -hmm. the drugs, opiates, telephones, the, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and all these. Uh, 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 what what those those the rings? That's another thing. The the Alexas. Mm -hmm. They can infiltrate our house. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they listen to us. Mm -hmm. Dude, they have to be. Yeah, well, how many times have you thought about something or typed, not even typed it in, but talked about something around your phone and then you'll see something come up on your phone about it later? Me and Samantha are talking about, you know, crazy me having a fifth kid, having a fifth kid, uh, talking about it. And now all of her ads on her phone are baby products mm -hmm. and um, like dresses for pregnant women. It's fucking scary. Scary, bro. I know. I've had things like that happen too where I've been like, bro, no way. Yeah. I think I'm gonna do like some like something where I'm just gonna make up a subject and talk about it completely off the way and then, you know what I mean? Say, I'm gonna see if it does this because I have no ads about this. Let's start mm -hmm. talking about it around the phone and see if these ads start mm -hmm. popping up. Yeah. Science uh, experiment. Yeah, just to see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we got way off subject, but whatever. You know what <laughs> it, it, all, it, it all it dwindles down to the same and thing. And it comes back to control, right? Mm -hmm. It comes back to controlling your thoughts, controlling your body to the point that you don't have freedom over it because mm -hmm. they control what you see on your tablet, what you see on your TV. So they're, you know, at least leading you to think a certain way. And then the same thing with the food. We want you to be unhealthy. You can't fight if you're unhealthy. Mm -hmm. you know, you, Drug you up right? with, with the, the drugs and the mm -hmm. cocaine and stuff. And that's that's... Dude, like I said, the ice bath has a lot to do with that. Get uncomfortable. Yes. Get uncomfortable being, or get yeah. comfortable being uncomfortable. Yep. And then get used to changes. Yeah. And, and realize what changes that you're making, whether it be getting off alcohol, getting off drugs, getting off cigarettes, getting off the poisonous food, get uncomfortable doing it. We can survive and, and just realize that it's a, just a healthier atmosphere. Try it out. Right. You know, like I said, Sam's, did the same thing she was all she ate was junk food now so i mean she's 10 times more livelier than what she was mm -hmm. definitely makes you lethargic <laughs> makes you feel different mm -hmm. i can't even eat that crap i've tried a few times and somebody's been like oh this is good i'm like god i'm starving so like, yeah just give me this and then i eat it and i'm like oh man i wish i wouldn't have done that immediately i feel bad i wish i had a penny for every time that she said that she when she did that when she was coming off the junk just wanted it, wanted it, wanted it. But as soon as they uh -huh. did it, it didn't. One one little chicken nugget. That's all it takes. And didn't hit the button. Yeah, as she, as she feels like crap for the rest of the day. Yeah, it's funny. I can bring that back to like after I've had time clean from certain things and then I like I've taken a Vicodin or something. Like, mm -hmm. oh, this will be fun. I haven't done this in two years and I ate one and uh, it, just, it doesn't hit the same button anymore. There's not a satisfaction to it the way it was then. Like maybe if I had a super pain or something, I could probably take it and it would help the pain. But the buzz that I used to seek from it isn't there anymore. That's crazy. And I think it's the same thing with the food like yeah. that. Once you get away from it, that buzz is not the same. It's not what you remember. Yeah, that's that's insane. I've, I've never done a drug in my life, but uh, I can only compare it to the food because mm -hmm. I used to eat the junk food. I remember going to McDonald's, eating two breakfast sandwiches in the morning. I lived off McDonald's when I worked at Jiffy Lube from like 17 to 20. That's the only thing we ate. It was for breakfast, lunch, and then whatever was fixed when I got home, which is probably some sh crap thrown in the oven. And yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't eat any of that anymore. We, I try to go to a butcher's too. I have a chick that I trade tattoos to, and she brings me a bunch of beef. So it's mm. hamburger, roasts, yeah. liver. I love liver. Most people don't like liver. I Never tried it. I a lot of liver. Yeah, I fry liver up. It's high in protein. Mm -hmm. I just eat that. I like that stuff too. Yeah, I've never tried it. I, I will have to. But yeah, that's basically, dude, I've, I've explained this to a lot of people. Turn the food pyramid upside down and anything that they say that's bad for you, the cholesterol free, fat free, your, your brain is half made of cholesterol and fat. 
That's all I eat is fat. If they say it's bad for you, it's probably good. If they say it's good for you, it's probably bad. Just reverse the rules. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, a good, a simplistic rule to live by if you want to change it up. No doubt. Yeah, that's yeah I've been interested in this one because we started talking about this when you first put the air conditioner in and like it's been something I've been doing. It was something I was building myself up to. So this right here is just a reiteration for mm -hmm. me of what I'm doing and mm -hmm. a little more focus time, you know? Yeah. Definitely. So I dig that. Was there anything else like you wanted to touch on as far as your notes go? Or anything no, like I'm that? good. We covered everything. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. So I like, uh, I feel like, do you want anybody to be able to follow you? You want to drop a Facebook link, anything like that? Drop your uh, business, maybe? I don't, I don't even, I don't have to advertise my business because mm -hmm. I'm word of mouth and I'm too busy right now. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm starting to turn down work. I need to hire somebody. Okay. So that would be cool. If somebody wants to come work with me right so looking <laughs> looking for somebody that actually works bro yeah not not pulling your phone out every three minutes right because i know what that's like too mm -hmm. but yeah uh and you know if somebody does want to hit you up though maybe you'll have something down the road because i yeah. know when i hit you up like the other dudes ain't even called back yeah. and you're done well that, that's that's how i get my business because right. i'm reliable and i don't bs mm -hmm. i get shit done and then how do you say your last name mm, raper See, I, I, that's what I was curious about, too, because I was wondering if I was saying it wrong or not. How's that been? Uh, have you ever heard the song by Johnny Cash, A Boy Named Sue? Uh-huh. Oh, there you go. Okay. Gotcha. Yep. Put those gotcha. two and two together. <laughs> right, because I feel like people definitely wanted to use that as a joke. Yeah. My name's Jamie, bro. Like, come on. Of yeah. course I got picked on for having a girl name when I was a kid. I get yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't as bad as what you would think. Right. But it made me tougher. That's what's up. Yeah. Well, hell yeah, man. I'm glad you came through. Yep. I'm glad we finally got this done. Yes, I've been looking forward to it. Yeah, we'll talk about uh, getting you on the tattoo schedule next. Yes. So, yeah, if y'all do want to find him, man, it's Jared Raper on Facebook, right? And he's definitely looking for some help, man, but yep. come prepared or don't come at all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, man, until next time, don't sweat the petty things. Pet the sweaty things. <laughs>